before we get to our next fallacy, the fallacy of weak induction, let's take a little time to think about what this particular style of reasoning is and logical reasoning. It's a form of inductive reasoning, but it's a little bit different than typical inductive inferences are. So in analogical reasoning, you're trying to make an inference about a situation or a problem with which you don't have much or any familiarity. So what do you do? You don't have a sample to draw. On. So what your brain does is it looks around and it says, this is like that was, or this case is like that case, or this is similar to that case. And it makes an analogical inference. It's a sort of risky inference strategy, but the idea is basically this. If a situation from your experiences is similar enough to the situation that you're in now, then maybe you can uh, infer that there are other similarities that will help you to solve that problem and make that inference. And so in analogical reasoning, you deal with these unfamiliar situations or you solve these novel problems by adapting your knowledge from more familiar or similar situations uh, and making inferences about how to solve the problem based on those similarities. So for example, uh, if you know that you hate okra because it's slimy and has weird texture, you might use analogical reasoning to infer that you'll dislike eggplant since it can look slimy when cooked as well. Or if you like the music of the band The Killers, you might reason that you'll like other pop bands who were influenced by new wave and Americana music of the 80s. Now, this is essentially the sort of inferences that Netflix makes and Spotify makes and Pandora makes, looking at what is similar to the things that you watched or liked or the things that other people watched that you also watched then inferring that you'll like the other things that they watched and so on. So this is how analogical reasoning works. To give us a more sort of concrete and systematic version, we're going to go through Paul Thagard's basic theory and apply it to Bohr's discovery, the Bohr-Rutherford or solar system model of the atom. So Thagard's reasoning, or theory rather, about this reasoning is sort of the way that we've been talking about it up to this point. When we have a novel problem, a problem for which we don't have any past experience to guide us, we think about other experiences that we've had in our past, other problems that we've solved in our past, and we try and find one that's similar enough that we have some confidence we can extrapolate other similarities from that problem to the problem we're trying to solve now. So, for instance, the Bohr model supposes that atoms have small, positively charged nuclei and that these nuclei are surrounded by negatively charged electrons, just as the sun is surrounded by planets. Now, there are differences, of course, and every analogy breaks down to some degree or another. Things aren't exactly the same, ever. So electrons travel in circular orbits in a manner that's sort of similar to planets orbiting the sun, but not exactly. For instance, they can have a certain number of different possible orbits that they can get into, but they can't get into any old orbit. Right? And of course, there are differences in the forces. Electromagnetic forces are the forces that enforce electron orbits. Gravity is the force that enforces planetary orbits. This is a hydrogen atom. It's got a nucleus and a single electron rotating, rotating around it in a set pattern on this model. So Thagard's model for analogical reasoning involves four steps. In the first step, you face a target problem that you need to solve. Now, you've never encountered this problem before, and so you don't have any script or schema for how to go about solving it. But you already have a whole bunch of constructed representations of possible source analogs, that is, problems you have solved, things that you're familiar with. And so what you want to do is compare 
those source analogs to the target analog and see if you can find one that has sufficient similarities. So Bohr starts off thinking, you know, look, I'm trying to discover the structure of the atom. I know that this function is a constituent of matter. I know certain facts about the properties of the elements that make up an atom. And what I want to do now is try and figure out a way to think about how to theorize about its structure. So you search through your past experience for source analogs. You say to yourself, okay, uh, what about people? Well, atoms aren't really anything like people. Dogs, no, not much. Uh, clouds, well, later that will be a source analog. Uh, well, a solar system, though, a solar system might work. After you select that source analog, then, you're looking for similarities in structure. And so you look at the atom, you go, okay, the atom has a structure, so it's a solar system. That structure is relatively stable, so it's a solar system structure. It has constituents, just like the solar system. In the case of the atom, we've got protons, neutrons, and electrons. In the case of the solar system, we've got planets, comets, moons, and meteors. They're organized. There's an operant force that enforces that organization. In the case of our atom, we know that it's the electromagnetic force. In the case of gravity, or sorry, the solar system, we know that it's gravity. So we see a whole bunch of similarities here. And now what we want to do, because we've seen enough similarities to think that there are more to be discovered or inferred, we make those inferences. We base our inference on a supposition that there are other relevant similarities. And so in particular, when we look at organization, the structure, right, we see that the solar system has an organization where there are rotation of planets, moons, comets, and so on, in set patterns around the sun. And so we make an inference that electrons rotate around a nucleus in set patterns. We extrapolate between our source and our target analogy. And this is a sort of abstract theoretical approach to analogical reasoning that people like Thagard suppose is really operant when we make these sorts of analogical inferences that we do. We probably don't do it nearly as systematically or as well as Thagard's model, or at least the example I gave you might suggest. So, I remember once when I used to work in restaurants, uh, when I was an undergraduate, uh, after work is hanging around the bar, and this guy uh, gave me the following analogical argument. As you know, atoms are like solar systems. Yeah. So, you know, maybe the universe, it just kind of reproduces itself all the way down. There must be tiny people living on electrons. Imagine what that would be like. But of course, there are a whole bunch of dissimilarities between atoms and solar systems. And there's no really reason to suppose that, for instance, electrons have atmospheres, just to begin with, right? And so this guy committed a fallacy of weaking out. He was a little drunk at the time, but still, right? Bad argument based upon analogy. 